Hi guys, this is Miss Anderson, and this lesson is going to focus on the expository essay. So our essential question for this um, lesson is going to be, how can I write an effective, informative, or explanatory essay that will clearly convey my ideas, concepts, and information? So that is what we are going to learn. Let's go. So basically, what is an expository essay? An expository essay basically explains or informs the reader with your knowledge about a particular topic. So if you were to talk about the topic of whales or dolphins or sharks, then an expository essay would simply explain and inform the reader your knowledge about that particular topic. Expository essays are meant to share information and ideas, yours, and also to provide explanation and evidence of a particular topic. So basically an expository essay, it exposes something, it tells something, it shares something, it explains something. So in an expository essay, you're just simply explaining. All right, so normally um, essays are written in either first person or third person. For example, a narrative essay is written in first person because you can be talking about yourself, which you're using the pronoun I. And then a, um, an argumentative essay is usually written in third person. Well, a uh, expository essay, which is what we're writing here, is generally written in second person. So you as the author are speaking to your reader. So you're going to use second person or second uh, uh, point of view perspective in which you are going to say you. So you're not going to say I, which is first person, and you're not going to say he, she, unless you're of course talking about someone, but you, the author, are specifically talking to your reader. So second person, point of view is what your expository essay will be written in. All right, so these are some of the things that your expository essay is going to include. Of course, it's going to include an introduction, um, which includes an interesting hook to grab your reader and bring them in and make them want to read it. It's also going to contain your thesis and your main idea. It's going to have three supporting paragraphs that will relate directly to your main idea. It's also going to have some transition words and phrases in there that will help your essay flow. And then hopefully, 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 your essay is going to conclude with a bang. That is kind of the cornerstone of all essays is that they start great and they end great. And then they give information in between so that the, the reader felt as if they have learned something. All right, so that is what your expository essay is. Is going to include. So going back to your introductory paragraph, okay? So you know you want to have your attention grabber, and we know that that attention grabber can be a question, it can be a statistical fact that you go out online, it can be a shocker, it can be anything that's going to grab your reader and make them want to read it more. So you have to give thought to what your topic is in order for you to think about what type of attention grabber you, you're going to have. For example, if you, if I was going to do a compare and contrast um, essay, which is a type of expository essay, if I were going to do a compare and contrast essay on the book The Martian. The book The Martian has, it's the book, it's a novel, and it is a movie as well. 
So my attention grabber would focus, because both the movie and the book focused on Mars, and everybody knows that Mars is a planet that we are um, investigating right now. So my attention grabber would be something like, how would you like to live on Mars? So it's a question, and that question is geared to get my reader interested by answering or thinking about that question. So hopefully that question will make them go, hmm, well, I've never given it any thought, but what would it be like to live on Mars? As long as you get your reader thinking with your hook or attention grabber, then they will continue to read. So that is the whole purpose of your hook. The next thing you're going to do is give some background information on your topic. So you want to tell readers a little bit about your topic. So if I'm using that same example, The Martian, I can talk about when the, the novel was first written and who the author was. And then I can also say when the movie was, was made uh, off of the book. Because a lot of times there's a big difference, a big um, gap between when a book was written versus the movie. So that's the background information that I would give, you know, like what genre it is, um, uh, maybe a little bit about the author, um, and then, you know, uh, and a little bit of the plot as well. All of that is considered background information on your topic. So your introductory paragraph is going to finally end with your thesis statement. Your thesis statement is going to tell me what I expect to read in the next few paragraphs. So your thesis statement is going to go something, if you're doing that compare and contrast with the book The Martian, you're going to say, um, this essay is going to compare and contrast the novel versus the book uh, titled The Martian. Something as simple as that. That way your readers know what they should be expecting next. So that, in a nutshell, is your introductory paragraph. All right, so let's talk about your supporting paragraphs. So your supporting paragraphs, you're going to have three of them. And so uh, each one is going to have your topic sentence. So your first sentence is going to tell us what that paragraph is going to talk about. Then you're going to cite your source. Okay, and if we're doing a comparative essay that compare and contrast, you're going to cite either the book or either the movie. Okay, you're going to pull something in from, from either of those sources. Then you're going to explain it. And then it's not enough to explain it, but you want to elaborate on it. You want to give some information on it. You want to talk about it. You want to tell the differences. You want to share with your readers your knowledge about that subject. And then, of course, when you finish all of that, then you're going to transition to your next paragraph. So the important thing to remember about your supporting paragraphs is that they have to be uh, logical. Make them logical. For example, if we are going to do our compare and contrast essay, um, we could compare and contrast in our first paragraph the characters of the book and the movie. We could talk about how they're similar or how they're different. In the second paragraph, we could talk about the setting, how the setting differed and or was the same in both the book and the movie. And then our third paragraph, we could talk about some of the events that took place in the, character, in the book and in the movie. So if you know anything about The Martian, it varied a whole lot. There were a lot of differences between uh, what we saw in the movie versus what we read in the book. So, I mean, all of those things you could, you could really talk about to, have, um, to demonstrate your knowledge on the particular topic and to show a comparison if you're writing a uh, compare and contrast essay. All right, so of course the last thing after you finish uh, showing off all of your knowledge that you gain is to conclude your essay, okay? And so your essay is going to, um, it's going to restate your, your, I'm sorry, your conclusion paragraph is going to restate your thesis, okay? And then it's going to summarize your main points, okay? And then it's going to end with a bang, okay? So you're restating your, your thesis. Make it kind of bright. Don't just, just restate it word from word for, from your first paragraph, but kind of change it up. Make it more interesting. 
and then summarize your, your three main points. So you could say something like, um, as you can see, um, the characters in, in the movie versus the book, uh, they really did not change a whole lot. The book and the movie basically had the same characters. So you're summarizing your main point. And you're going to do that for all three of your paragraph. And then you're going to conclude with a bang. Well, the book really did um, uh, have the reader create a lot of imagination versus the movie gave the, gave the viewer a lot of visual effects. So you're going to end with something concluding and something, um, something nice that will uh, end it all for your reader. So basically, guys, that is an expository essay. And so we're going to do more in class, but I hope that at least gets you started. Thanks a lot. Bye.